So this is a really, really cool photo technique that I'm gonna show you. Now, this might seem kind of common to you, but one thing to think with is as a client, as a non-photographer, you don't see these that often. When you see them on Instagram, you're like, wow, that's super cool. But we as photographers see them all over the place. But as a client, these things are mind blowing. And I'm just simply talking about double exposure photos. And maybe you know how to do them, maybe you don't. They're relatively simple, the technique, especially in Photoshop, it's a relatively easy step to do. But this particular photo, this particular, this particular photo that I'm gonna show how to do is one of my number one requested photos when I do shoots with clients, engagement shoots, things like that. So let's get into uh, Photoshop and just get right into it. Will Simpson here and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna show you how to create this ring photo here. Now you might be thinking, no, eh, it's nothing crazy. And you're right, it's not. For us, it's extremely simple. One key though, is if you're trying to do these, plan ahead. Decide how you, what photos you need to take to create these photos. That way you don't like figure it out when you're on location with your client. For example, this ring photo, you have to take two photos. First, the photo of the couple like this here, then a photo of the ring. Now I'm not using any fancy equipment. I'm using an EF 2470 2.8. All I'm doing here is I'm ex um, zooming in to 70 millimeters, getting as close as I can without breaking minimal focal distance. So I get it in focus and I'm focusing on just the ring. So if you zoom in here, you notice the ring is in focus. Now that's all you need. You don't need anything else to do this photo. If you're doing the arms over the hands photo, take a picture of the couple, take a picture of their hands, take their hands out, put them in. It's really, really simple. So once you learn how to do one, you can get creative and do all kinds of cool double exposures. So let's get right into this and create this photo. So here's the photo. Now I took this photo here and it's already edited, so before, after simple edit, nothing fancy. I didn't want to get too crazy. Uh, shot at ISO 200, 35 millimeter, f 2.8, one two hundredth of a second. Then, while they're still standing there, didn't even make a move. I took this photo. This one, ISO 200, 70 millimeter, f 2.8, one two hundredth of a second. Basically the same thing, I think, except for different millimeter. I zoomed all the way out 35, zoomed into 70, no problem. Now, one thing, if you are going to shoot this photo. Caution, 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 caution. Be very careful with their rings because you drop a ring and you lose eye contact with that ring for one second in sand and you could potentially lose it. So cautionary, do not take your eye off the ring. Be very, very, very aware of the ring at all times. Okay, good. Now, once you've edited the photos, I didn't edit this one because I really didn't need to, but you could apply the same edit. So let's press shift and select both photos. So we have them both enabled. We're gonna right click on it and we're going to go to edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. Not edit in Photoshop, open as layers in Photoshop because you want both of the images open in the same layer in Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop and what we're going to do is first, this is our main image. So make sure that you see how this one's on top. We're gonna select that one. Command T, and we're going to resize this so it fits the entire area. And then we're just gonna simply turn this off and we're going to work on the ring. So we're gonna click the ring. Let's just rename these here, ring couple. Okay, now we're gonna zoom in. So Z on the keyboard, click and swipe right, and that'll zoom us in. Press W on the keyboard for the quick select tool. And let's just um, press select subject and see what happens. Sometimes we get lucky. Now it's all over the place. So command D to unselect. Uh, with the quick select tool still selected, we are just going to draw over this thing here. Probably does a good job. Good. We can probably get a couple more of this. All right, now we're gonna press L on the keyboard for the lasso tool. If you don't see that lasso tool, you can right click on this and get your lasso tool. Pushing Alt or Option on a Mac, you'll notice you'll get a minus sign and we're going to use that to subtract the interior of the ring because we don't need any of that. Now you can go as fast or slow, but just be as specific as you can. The more detailed you are, the better it will end up being. So take a minute to do this and we're just gonna fine tune it here in a second. Oh gosh, that was bad. If you wanna zoom in, you press Z on the keyboard, zoom in, L for the lasso tool. Let me get closer. Now I'm gonna do this kind of rough, just 
because of time constraints and trying not to make you sit here for three hours learning this technique because there's no point. You can spend all of this time doing it yourself <laughs> and not listening to me. And good, okay, command zero, zooms all the way out and we have the ring selected. Now, with that all selected, press command J. This will make a copy of the ring, click this one and turn it off. Now we have just the ring. Now we're gonna take the layer one of the ring and we're gonna drag it on top of our couple and turn our couple back on, our layer back on. So with the ring selected, command T, and this will select the ring. We're going to enlarge it all the way, good. And I like to have it go off, this is a personal preference, totally up to you on your style. I like to have it go out of the screen just a shade because it makes it look a little bit more foregroundy. I don't know, foregroundy. Looks a little bit nicer. Make this bigger, good. Now it's going off the screen just a little bit too much, so we're gonna come down a little bit, but I want this the rock way high. Good, just like that. Center it, beautiful, excellent. So now, it's in the foreground, so technically it should be blurry. And honestly, blurring it a little really helps you hide flaws and details. So we're gonna go up here to filter. We're going to go to blur, Gaussian blur, and we're just going to blur it a little bit. Now, this is all up to you. You can blur it a lot, which looks terrible, obviously, or you can blur it almost none. But again, this is a, this is a personal preference here. How much do you want it blurred? I usually go about a medium. I think with realisticness, if it was in the foreground and it, I was shooting at a 2.8, it would be relatively blurry. So we're just gonna raise this until we get it to that point. Now I kinda like, let's do an even 20, and that looks pretty good to me. So then we press okay, and there we have it. Now we're gonna crop it a little bit to 4.5, 4 Instagram special, good, and there we have it. Now, with this specific one, you don't have to worry about doing any shadowing or anything. And why is that? Because it was super cloudy. Do you see any shadows in this image? No. But if you wanted to do a little bit of shadowing, click the layer of the couple, click a new layer here. Now, there's probably a way better way to do this. I'm not the best when it comes to shadows, to be honest. So we're gonna do a brush, B on the keyboard, make sure black is the foreground. If you don't see it, you can press D on the keyboard to bring them to default, so you'll see a black and white box, and then press X to toggle back and forth with black as the foreground. I'm just gonna paint under. Now the reason I put this under the ring layer is so it's behind it, and we're just gonna put a little shadowing. Now again, that looks terrible, but all we're gonna do is lower the opacity to like 20%, and it's just gonna give a little shadow. Uh, using the uh, eraser tool E on the keyboard, just gonna clean that up a little that looks a little too much. And it's just giving a little bit. Now, again, like I said, there's probably a way better way to do this, but you know what? Ain't no one gonna know. So there you have it. That is the quick way to do this. And you can do this on so many different images, but it's just a really unique thing to deliver to your clients and something that will make you stand out among other photographers. So that's the technique, pretty simple fairly easy and straightforward. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out the links and goodies in the description, you know you want to. And to keep going on your photography education, YouTube recommends that video, I recommend this video. Have fun, I'll see you next week.